Have you ever stood in your garden on a quiet morning, coffee in hand, looking at your soil and wondering, what on earth is going on down there? If you've gardened for a few decades or more, you've probably tried a little bit of everything, maybe a splash of vinegar to chase off ants or loosen mineral buildup, or a sprinkle of baking soda because someone swore it sweetens tomatoes. But here's the surprising truth most gardeners don't realize. One of these household staples can gently wake up the living soil community beneath your feet, while the other can quietly shut it down, sometimes for weeks. And the difference often comes down to tiny details, how diluted it is, what kind of soil you're working with, and even the time of day you apply it. Welcome back to Evergreen Seniors, where we help older adults garden smarter, not harder, with simple science-backed tips you can use today. In this video, we're going to walk together through the real story behind vinegar and baking soda. Not the myths, not the folk remedies, but the actual biology happening beneath the surface. Because when you understand how these two ingredients react with your soil life, you'll never look at your backyard the same way again. So let's slow down, take a deep breath, and reconnect with the living world under our feet. The hidden world beneath your soil. Before we talk about vinegar or baking soda, we need to talk about the world they affect. And believe me, it's a world worth knowing. Your soil is not dirt, it's a living ecosystem, older and more organized than any garden book ever printed. Inside a single handful of healthy soil, there are billions of microscopic workers. Bacteria, fungi, protozoa, nematodes, microarthropods, and of course, our favorite garden friends, the earthworms. All of them are constantly breaking down organic matter turning minerals into plant food and creating the structure that roots need to breathe and grow. But here's the part most gardeners forget. This living community depends on balance. Microbes like calm, stable conditions, especially when it comes to pH and moisture. Even small changes can shift an entire soil food web in the blink of an eye. If the soil becomes too acidic or too alkaline, the microbial activity slows, nutrient cycling weakens, and suddenly plants stop thriving, even if you're watering and fertilizing like normal. This is why understanding vinegar and baking soda is so important. These ingredients don't just sit in the soil. They don't just dry up or wash away. They actively change the living conditions under the soil surface. And depending on how you use them, they can either support your garden or sabotage it. So with that foundation in mind, let's explore exactly what vinegar does to your soil and how you can use it safely and effectively as a senior gardener. Vinegar, acidic awakener or silent microbial killer. Vinegar, especially the simple white vinegar you probably already have in your kitchen is acetic acid. It's natural, it's inexpensive, and it's incredibly potent. And depending on the dose, it can be one of the most helpful or harmful things you pour onto your garden. Now here's the useful part for many older gardeners, especially those living in areas with naturally alkaline soil like the Southwest or Midwest. A small, gentle amount of vinegar can temporarily lower the soil's pH. And this short-lived acidity can do something magical. It can unlock nutrients that your plants weren't able to reach before. When vinegar is properly diluted, it can help release calcium, magnesium, and phosphorus that are stuck in compacted or alkaline soil. That means your tomatoes, peppers, herbs, and leafy greens suddenly get access to nutrients they've been missing. And because microbes perform better in that slightly acidic environment, the whole soil life community gets a little boost. It's like turning on the lights in a room that was dim for a long time. But, and this is a big warning, when vinegar is used too strongly, it does the opposite. Full-strength vinegar, especially horticultural vinegar that goes above 10% acetic acid, is strong enough to sterilize the top layer of soil. It can burn delicate microbial colonies, harm fungi, repel worms, and even scorch the tiny root hairs your plants depend on to feed themselves. So how do you use vinegar the right way? It's simple. Mix two tablespoons of white vinegar into one liter of water, stir it well, and apply it only to moist soil. Never apply vinegar solutions on dry ground and never under direct hot sunlight. Soil life is extremely sensitive when the ground is hot or drought stressed. Even diluted vinegar can cause a microbial collapse during those times. If you follow these precautions, vinegar becomes a gentle soil stimulant, 
something that wakes up nutrient cycling and supports microbial activity without harming the garden you've worked so hard to build. Baking soda. Helpful buffer or slow soil destroyer? Now that we've explored how vinegar behaves in the soil, let's turn to its opposite, baking soda. Many gardeners, especially those who grew up hearing traditional home remedies, believe baking soda is a universal fix. Some sprinkle it around tomato plants to reduce acidity, others mix it with water to treat powdery mildew, and some use it to deodorize compost piles. But what baking soda actually does beneath the soil surface is far more complex, and honestly, something we all need to understand clearly if we want to protect our garden's long-term health. Baking soda, also known as sodium bicarbonate, is alkaline. When you add it to soil, the pH rises quickly. And while that may sound helpful if your soil is too acidic, the truth is that most beneficial soil microbes prefer a slightly acidic to neutral environment, usually between pH 6.0 and 7.0. Once you push the soil past that comfort zone towards 7.5 or higher, microbial activity starts to slow down. Their enzymes don't function as efficiently, nutrient cycling weakens, and your soil gradually becomes less biologically active. Now, baking soda can still be useful, especially in gardens where soil has gone sour. If you notice a strong, unpleasant smell coming from overly wet soil, compost-heavy beds, or garden boxes with poor drainage, that odor often signals excess organic acids. In those cases, a very mild baking soda solution can help bring the soil back to balance. And when the acidity calms, microbes often begin recovering on their own. But we must be very careful here. The biggest danger of baking soda is not its alkalinity, it's the sodium. Too much sodium builds up over time, forming a hard, crusty layer on the soil surface. And this crust doesn't just look bad, it blocks water from entering the soil, restricts air movement, and dries out roots. Earthworms avoid it, beneficial fungi avoid it, and soon your soil becomes compacted and lifeless. So, if you want to use baking soda safely, here's the gentle approach. Dissolve one teaspoon of baking soda in one liter of water, mix thoroughly, and apply lightly, not frequently, and never on dry soil. This amount is enough to neutralize acidity without adding excessive sodium. And just like vinegar, timing matters. Early morning or late afternoon application gives your soil the best chance of responding positively. Which one wakes up soil life better? At this point, you might be wondering, between vinegar and baking soda, which one actually wakes up soil life? Which one helps the microbes you care about perform better, multiply faster, and support your plants more effectively? Well, after decades of gardening experience and countless soil experiments, the answer becomes pretty clear. Vinegar takes the lead, but only in small, carefully diluted amounts. Why vinegar? Because a slight drop in pH frees up nutrients that have been locked away in the soil. When phosphorus, calcium, and magnesium become more available, microbes have more fuel to work with. They feed more actively, break down organic matter faster, and create a more nutrient-rich environment for your plant roots. Think of vinegar, when diluted, as a gentle alarm clock. It doesn't overwhelm your soil. Instead, it nudges the microbes, waking them up from a sluggish state and encouraging them to get back to work. Baking soda, however, is more like a reset button. It doesn't energize your soil. Instead, it helps bring an overly acidic environment back into balance. This is useful in certain situations, such as waterlogged beds or compost-dense containers, but it doesn't activate microbial growth. It simply slows the stress. If your soil feels compacted, sluggish, or low in life, diluted vinegar gives it a controlled spark. But if your soil smells sour, seems overly wet, or shows signs of acidic stress, then baking soda can help calm things down, gently and gradually. The key is understanding your soil's condition before choosing. Soil that is already alkaline will not appreciate baking soda. Soil that is already acidic will not appreciate vinegar. But a mindful gardener, especially one with experience and patience, can use these substances like tuning tools, adjusting the soil environment just enough to help the microbial community thrive. The real secret most gardeners never learn. Here's where many gardeners, even those with decades of experience, run into trouble. They start thinking vinegar or baking soda is the solution to soil problems. But the truth is, neither one can fix unhealthy soil on its own. What truly determines the health of your soil is not the pH tweaks, it's the organic matter. 
Without enough carbon-rich material for microbes to eat, your soil will never reach its full potential, no matter how perfectly you adjust the acidity. This is especially important for older gardeners who may prefer low-effort strategies. Instead of trying to correct soil problems after they appear, the better approach is to gradually build soil life through small, consistent this habits. A Adding a thin layer of compost every season, mulching with leaves or straw, letting grass clippings decompose naturally on the lawn, or incorporating worm castings into container gardens. So All of these practices do far more to wake up your soil than vinegar or baking soda ever could. And here's something even more powerful. Soil life responds strongly to regular moisture, steady temperature, and gentle protection. Watering deeply, but less frequently, gives microbes the hydration they need. Mulching keeps the soil cool and reduces evaporation. Minimizing soil disturbance allows fungal networks to remain intact. These small choices make a huge difference, especially for gardeners who rely on nature to do part of the work. When you do decide to use vinegar or baking soda, Think of them as micro-adjustments, not major treatments. They're just tools, useful but limited. The real transformation happens when soil has food, air, water, and the right conditions to thrive. That's when earthworms return, when roots grow deeper, and when your garden begins to feel alive again. The Senior Gardener's Balanced Approach As we get older, we start to appreciate gardening in a deeper, more meaningful way. It becomes less about chasing the biggest harvest and more about caring for the soil, enjoying the process, and feeling that quiet sense of satisfaction when something healthy grows under our hands. And the truth is, the healthiest gardens, especially for seniors who value simplicity, come from a gentler, more balanced philosophy. Instead of trying to fix soil problems with quick remedies, think of your garden as a living partner that responds best to consistent attention. Soil thrives when it's fed slowly, when it's protected, and when we avoid extremes. A thin layer of compost each season, a blanket of mulch to hold moisture, and the natural rainfall patterns all do far more than any kitchen ingredient ever could. This balanced approach becomes even more important as our bodies slow down. Most seniors don't want to be turning compost piles every week or applying complicated fertilizers. What we want is something steady and sustainable, something that gives back more than it takes. And building soil life is exactly that kind of investment. When you care for the soil, the soil starts caring for you. So let vinegar and baking soda remain tools, useful yes, but never the foundation. The real foundation is living soil, soft, rich, full of worms, breathing, vibrant, capable of taking care of your plants, even on the days when you can't get outside as much as you'd like. The final verdict. Now that we've walked through the science, the experience, and the real-world gardening wisdom, what's the final answer? Between vinegar and baking soda, which one truly wakes up your soil life? The truth is simple. Vinegar has the edge, but only when used carefully, diluted properly, and applied at the right moment. That slight acidification helps unlock nutrients, stimulates microbial cycles, encourages healthy bacteria to get moving again, and breathes life into compacted or alkaline soils. It's the spark, the little nudge, the gentle alarm clock that tells your soil, wake up, it's time to work. Baking soda, on the other hand, is not an awakener, it's a reset button. It calms overly acidic, sour soils and helps restore balance, but it doesn't energize soil life. And if you overuse it, the sodium buildup can slowly shut down the very microbes you're trying to help. But here's the deeper wisdom every senior gardener should take away. Neither vinegar nor baking soda is a magic bullet. They are simply conditioners, fine-tuning tools. The real magic, the true miracle, comes from consistent organic matter, gentle watering, mulching, and protecting the soil ecosystem. Healthy soil doesn't come from quick fixes. It comes from habits, patience, and love. And the beauty is, you already know how to do that. You've lived enough seasons to understand that slow and steady always wins in the garden. If you've ever experimented with vinegar or baking soda in your garden, I'd love to hear about it. Drop your story in the comments. What worked? What didn't? Or what surprised you? Your experience might be exactly what another senior gardener needs to hear today. And if this video helped you understand your soil a little more deeply, don't forget to tap the like button and subscribe 
so you don't miss the next practical, senior-friendly gardening tip. Share it with a fellow gardener who loves learning about the quiet miracles happening under their feet. Because the more we understand the life living beneath our soil, the bacteria, the fungi, the worms, the entire invisible community, the better our gardens grow, and the more joy we get from tending them. Here at Evergreen Seniors, we believe gardening isn't just a hobby. It's a way of staying grounded, staying active, and staying connected to the world around us, one handful of living soil at a time.